What we're about to discuss might come as a surprise to you, as it did me. We're going to be looking into Christian belief and what it means when someone says they believe in Jesus. In James 2.19, we read that the devil says he believes and trembles also. So does that make one a Christian by saying they have a belief? Now, I don't want to come across as dogmatic. It's hard to account for everyone and their walk with God and where they are in their faith. There's probably many new believers that never heard this discussion before, and there's probably a lot of older believers that are falling out of their faith. Either way, there's hope. I want you to be encouraged. Just because you might find yourself outside of the group that we're talking about now, it doesn't mean that you cannot return or be enlightened through the reading of the scriptures and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So the discussion has to begin somewhere. So I think it could be done with mercy. So let's cautiously move forward and try to find the truth together. Be encouraged, don't be discouraged. If you find yourself on the outside looking in, just know all you have to do is ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to come into your life to give you understanding. And then you too can know the love of Jesus Christ. Let's begin. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. What do they mean when they say they believe in Jesus? In 2015, Pew Research published a study showing nearly an 8% drop in just 7 years from 78% of Americans identifying as Christian now down to 71%. Pew Research released a new study for the years 2018 through 2019 showing that Christian adults now make up 65% of the population. That's down from 78% in 2008. Now, the population of the United States is like 330 million, but for the sake of uh, simplicity, we're going to go with 300 million. So at a rough population of the USA at 300 million, in 2008, 78% of the population equals 234 million members of the body of Christ. In 2019, 65% of the population equals 195 million members of the body of Christ. So this represents a decline in the body of Christ of 39 million souls. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. We're going to have to dig a little deeper. So let's take a look. 80% of Americans said they believed in a God, with only 56% of the self-proclaimed believers saying they believed in the God of the Bible. So 80% equals 240 million. 56% equals 134,400,000 that believe in the God of the Bible. If we take the number who claim to be Christian in 2019 being 195 million and subtract the number who actually believe in the God of the Bible, we wind up with a further loss of 60,600,000 from the body of Christ. For a total loss in the body of Christ at 99,600,000 souls with 134 million claiming to be Christian and believing in the God of the Bible. That gives us just under 45% of the population of the United States that are Christian. Under further inspection, we find that biblical Christianity is on decline. Now you have to ask yourself, what is filling that spiritual vacuum? So let's look a little deeper. From 1972 to 2018, the unaffiliated group, atheists, agnostics, and spiritual dabblers had experienced more than a four-fold increase from 1972 at 5% growing rapidly to 23% in 2018. While at the same time, the body of Christ sustained huge losses among its members. Yes, to us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, 
and we for him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and we live through him. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In 1993, just 10% of Christians who shared their faith agreed with the statement, converting people to Christianity is the job of the local church, as opposed to a personal responsibility. 25 years later, 30% now believe it's the church's job to spread the gospel not a personal responsibility. Yet, the most dramatic divergence over time is on the statement, every Christian has a responsibility to share their faith. In 1993, 89% agreed. Today, just 64% agree, showing a 25% drop. This drop was within the group of those who have actually shared their faith. Of those who shared their faith in 1993, 79% would emphasize the beneficial aspects of accepting Jesus. This is down to 50% today, showing a 29% drop. Also, less popular now is quoting passages from the Bible, 59% in 1993 as opposed to 37% today. Sadly, 47% of the millennial generation agrees that it's somewhat wrong to share one's personal belief with someone of a different faith in hopes that they will one day convert them to their faith. Concerning faithful believers, 80% of those who attend church one or more times a month believe they have a personal responsibility to share their faith. Yet, despite this conviction, 61% have not told another person about how to become a Christian in the past six months. When asked how many times they have invited an unchurched person to church or church function, 48% responded zero, 33% say they have at least two times, while 19% said they have two or three times in the last six months. The Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For the hope that is laid up for you in heaven, which you have heard in the word of the truth of the gospel. The Religious Landscape Study, conducted by Pew in 2014, revealed that for those affiliated to a Christian faith tradition, only 82% believed in heaven, and only 67% believed in hell. And be not afraid of them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. According to the survey, Religion and Public Life of 2008, 52% of American Christians think that at least some non-Christian faith can lead to eternal life. Among that group, 80% can name at least one non-Christian faith they believe you can receive eternal life in. The newest survey conducted now shows that 65% of Christians believe that a non-Christian faith can lead to eternal life. This is up from 52% in 2008. Now 80% can name at least one other way 
and 61% can name two other ways to receive eternal life. If we just take the original number of 65% of America considers itself Christian, which is 195 million, 65% of these individuals come to 126,750,000. So 126,750,000 believe that Jesus is not the only way to receive salvation. So this leaves us at only 68 million 250,000 followers of biblical Christianity. Yet we are not done. Sadly, these numbers get even smaller. When asked what determines who will obtain eternal life, combining all statistics for all Christian faith traditions, only 17% said a belief in Jesus, relationship with Jesus being born again, while 16% said being a good person, living a good life, and morals with the third largest group coming in at a combined total of 7%, 4% being belief in God and some actions, and 3% being belief in Jesus and some actions. Here is the graphic from pewform.org charting what determine who attains eternal life and all the answers given. If we take the larger 17% and combine it with the 7% we just read, we come up with 24%. Taking the original number of 65% or 195 million Americans claiming to be Christian, only 24% of these individuals believe a belief in Jesus, a relationship with Jesus being born again, and believe with some actions provide biblical salvation of their soul. So 24% of 195 million brings us to 46,800,000 or 15.6% of the overall population. Rounding up, therefore, only 16% believe in biblical Christianity, not the previously stated 65%, leaving us with a loss of 148,200,000 souls from the body of Christ. So, we have to ask the question, what do they mean when they say they believe in Jesus? It is no wonder that Jesus said in Luke 18.8 that when he returns, he wondered if he would even find faith upon the earth. In this, we find two great parallels in scripture. One's a prophecy, one is a parable. They equal up to our 24% of actual Christians being biblically sound Christians and 16% of the population in the United States actually being Christian. In Ezekiel 9, we are told the prophetic story of God bringing judgment upon the nation of Israel, the people of God, which I believe is the prophetic for all the nations of the earth. In Ezekiel 9, we see a Christ-like figure, which I believe is Jesus, being told to go and mark those who cry out to God for all the evil done in the nation. Then he tells six other men to follow after the first man and utterly destroy all those who did not have the mark of God upon them. So six men execute judgment of destruction and one man, Jesus, marks the saved. We are left with the impression one-seventh are saved and six out of seven are punished. So one-seventh is 14%. Remember we just talked about how the actual number of true believers in biblical Christianity within our country is 16%? For me, this is statistically close enough to be considered a match. Once again, the prophecy of scripture is proving accurate and true. This actually brings us closer to the number Jesus gave us in the parable of the sower, found in Matthew 13, 18 through 23. You know the story where the sower is sowing seed for the harvest and the seed lands on four different types of ground. Each type of ground represents a different type of hearer of the gospel. These are the four types of people. We will say that a quarter of the seed fell on the pathway. They hear the truth and cannot understand it. Then Satan comes and steals the truth of Jesus from them. Another quarter falls on rocky ground. They joyfully receive the truth of Jesus, yet it never grows roots of change in their hearts. Then persecution comes because of their faith in Jesus, and they give up. Yet another quarter fall among thorny weeds. But worries about life and money stop the seed from growing, and their faith in Jesus dies. Then finally, another quarter, or 25% of the seed, falls on the good ground. 
This good seed not only then produces true believers in Jesus, yet also a crop of new believers, 30, 60, 100 fold greater than themselves. Now Jesus doesn't tell us it's 25% equally of all the seeds landing in their prospective areas. It could be much more or much less, but we are left with the impression these seeds are in force. So I feel confident that 25% is a fair number for the sake of this conversation. So we have 25% of true light bearers. Now, if you remember our numbers from our previous discussion, we were left with 24% known as the body of Christ in North America. 75% or three fourths who claim to be believers in Jesus did not believe in biblical Christianity. Therefore, Jesus' parable of the sower has come true in the USA. We are left with 24% seed of the gospel left on good ground. No, this is not a definitive test for Christianity, nor does it take into account those who are new to the faith or those leaving the faith. But even if this information was 50% accurate or 25% accurate, we'd all have to agree it's very concerning. And the overall trend in America is down, not up. We have to wonder about what kind of environment we're leaving for our children and the situation the future or faithful will have to live in. Let's look at the words of Jesus and ponder their meaning deeply. Enter in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter in by it. How narrow is the gate, and restricted is the way that leads to life. Few are those who find it. I needed to share with you this information to help you better understand how dire the situation is. Even in North America, where there seems like there's a church on every corner, the populace is dying spiritually. We read in 2 Timothy 3.5 that they had a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. This is the first in a series of videos in production to call out the body of Christ from spiritual Babylon. As you subscribe, you'll be alerted to the newest videos available. We also thank you for sharing it with your friends and family. Most of all, we appreciate the fact that you pray for this ministry. So until then, brothers and sisters, burn bright or be no light at all.